<laughs> okay, what is up guys? It's Apollo here and we are back with Rome Total War. This is another siege battle. This is a replay sent in to my Discord, uh, which is always much appreciated. I'm always looking for replays to cover. And if you guys do have an epic replay, uh, be sure to contact one of the admins. And they will post your replay in the Discord, which is a big help. So let's uh, let's go ahead and jump into this one and check out what we got going on here. So we got a 2v2. Uh, this is a pretty cool map here. One we don't see too often. There There is a little bridge situation here. But I don't think the town center... Or is it? No, the town center I don't believe is over here. So this is kind of just extra fluff. Uh, it's kind of like a Warhammer siege, you know, where they have all the cool, like, background scenery you can never use. Um, so, I think, um, if, you know, they're definitely going to hold right here as both armies are attacking right here. So, we have our Verni attacking on this northern side. And then over here, whoa, whoa, whoa. Okay, we got a little bit of a sally out here. So, uh, this is Tylus, who's, uh, who's over here. I'm sorry, this is not Tylus. This is <laughs> my bad. This is the Armenians. Uh, they are over here uh, with some axemen ready to go. But now on the defensive side, we've got Nabatia, who of course is sallying out some desert heavy lancers, trying to find any kind of opportunity to crush some vulnerable units. Looks like he's got an opportunity. They are not shifting troops. What are they doing? Why are they doing that? Does he not realize he's got have behind him uh anyways the other army that's holding off against our verney is carthage there we go okay so he is paying attention that was actually a pretty good move there how he flushed the units through the infantry right at the last second and i, I yeah that was a great play by the attackers there uh didn't lose anybody and inflicted many casualties on the cav look the cav is down to 62 out of 80 wow Okay, so yeah, really good play there. We've got a bunch of siege towers moving in here. Looks like our Verney's gonna reach the walls first. And it's full full steam ahead. Full uh full sail. They're going in. And trying to hold the walls is some Libyan infantry. Again, I do not advise um having your infantry on the walls like this. Now, if this is a stone wall, definitely put your troops on a stone wall. But don't put them directly in front. Try not to put them directly in front of the siege tower. See, what happens here, when you have your troops in, in barbarian settlements, non-stone wall settlements, when you have your troops on the walls like this, what happens is that the attacking infantry, when they jump off the siege towers, they kind of like run through the unit a little bit. It makes the unit a little not as good. A little not as good, you know what I mean? You know, you know what I mean? It makes the unit not as effective at uh, defending because they've got infantry past their front line. You know, it's not good. Uh, so what I do when I hold these types of settlements is just hold right behind the wall. Let the enemy, let the enemy come out a little bit. You know, make sure your formation doesn't get disrupted. And sometimes when you let the enemy come out a little bit, it leaves little areas of flanking possible. So you definitely want to give some space to the attackers. But yeah, this is just a big mosh pit. It looks like Celt Celtic warriors versus Celtic warriors. This guy's like, oh, wait a second. Did I, did I leave the oven on at home? Oh no. He's like, oh, I don't know. I don't know. He's like fidgeting. Oh, I think I left the oven on. He's like, come on, bro, it's time to fight. Yeah, yeah, I know, I know, but, but I, think, I think the oven's on. Ah, dang it! <laughs> now he's frustrated, you know, he's just sitting there. Pure frustration. Like, ah, now look at that face. That is a face of someone who's, he can't remember if he left the hair straightener on or the oven on. Look at, look at that. Is, that is a face of, you, you, you guys have been there. Maybe you're like driving on the road. Or you're, you know, you just get to school or work and you realize, oh crap, did I, did I forget to turn something off? Oh, oh no. That's literally what, he's still just standing here. Look at him. He's like, bro, are you going to charge in and help out your fellow comrades? <laughs> your fellow brother? Oh, there he goes. He's, ah, you forget it. 
No, or no, at the last second, he's like, oh, wait, no, 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 I turned it off. Okay, I remember. It <laughs> jumps in. <laughs> oh, wait a second. Oh, oh I, t I remember making a little mental note. See, over here, this is a better, this is a better defense, in my opinion. You got to be a little careful around the arrow towers, because sometimes you do want to hold the arrow towers, so you might want to hold a little bit closer to keep the arrow towers activated. Um... But yeah, this is a better defense right here. They kind of see how they let them in a little bit. Then they formed a line. Much better, much better. Anyways, let's go to the other side. Because I'm sure the Armenians, Armenians, uh, Armenians. I never get, I never get it right. Anyways, they are pushing forward. And they have zero resistance uh, for the outer walls. It's the complete opposite from Carthage and uh, against Arverni, you know? They have completely, uh, are holding the outer walls. Meanwhile, uh, Nabatea is just kind of like, yo, take it. I don't care. You won't do it. You know, you won't do it. Uh, but yeah, they're pushing up a lot of infantry. And naturally, we have the defenders using their skirmishers trying to soften up the infantry. Got to be careful with that. You don't want to use too much ammo on infantry like this. Um, now, of course, if there's a great opportunity to go after, you know, pikemen, you know, that type of infantry. I say, hey, let it let it rain. You know, let it rain on the pikemen. Uh, but on heavily armored swordsmen like this with big shields, it just doesn't seem uh, cost effective to use a lot of ammo. Now, if you're behind them or shooting them from the flank while they're busy fighting infantry, that's pretty. You know, that's pretty good because you're gonna kill a lot because they're not looking. You know, their shields aren't looking the way of the arrow, the path of the arrow. Uh, so, yeah. But I think they're holding fire. So, good play by Nabatia. Not wasting ammo. Conserving ammo. Um, over here, we've got more troops. More attacking forces over here. But there's really not a ton of defenders. You can see, well, they're just, just letting them come in. They're just basically defending the flank of Carthage as Carthage holds um, this defense. Here, this is... This is another good example of the defense I kind of use. Uh, the way he has his troops behind the walls. Also, these uh, naked warriors, they're probably like, I don't, you know, I don't want to get too close here. Come on, let's let's back it up here, boys. Uh, I don't, I, I don't, I don't want to be around these naked warriors. Yucky, yucky. Oof. Imagine being a naked warrior. You know, like what? What? I mean, I get it. It's like a, it's like a, it's like a fear thing. It's, you know, it's, it's pretty funny in, um, kind of like the age of sail, like piracy, uh, like Western piracy, uh, in the East Indies. Uh, I, was it, I think it was Black Sam. Yeah, Black Sam. I forgot his, Sam something. I forgot his full name, but he, his pirate name was Black Sam because of his black hair. That he had, he had dark. He probably had dark brown hair, but it looked black. Uh, so they call him Black Sam. Anyways, he was actually one of the more famous pirates, and I'm completely forgetting. I can't believe it. I'm forgetting his name. Uh, but he often used that tactic of stripping naked and making sure the enemy saw them naked on their ship, and causing these vessels. Uh, to surrender without even a fight uh, So you had you know, you had these merchant ships being like oh my god These guys are crazy And just without even firing a cannon will surrender the ship and he was actually a really good pirate uh, because he um, you know, he was pretty um, Moral like obviously he was a pirate, but like the reason he was a pirate too is because it wasn't out of his own self greed. It was because he wanted to um, marry a girl back. I think he's from Boston, but he wanted to marry a girl, but her family did not like him because he wasn't wealthy. So he just wanted to get wealthy, and that's his reasoning to go into piracy. And the the sad thing is that finally he he gathered so much wealth from piracy. And the sad thing is on his way home because uh, what happened is his, his uh, girlfriend, they weren't married at the time, she got pregnant, right? And that's a big no-no. I think his girlfriend's from one of those like Quaker kind of like, uh, you know, you can't do anything wrong kind of situation. By the way, um, Nabati over here holding against 
uh, these axemen. But anyways, uh, his 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 girl is pregnant. She has the baby. The baby dies. Now I don't know. It's, I don't think she killed it, but a lot of people, a lot of people back then accused women of killing their babies, um, just out of like. You know, like it, especially if they get knocked up and the and the the man's not there, you know, they just don't want to deal with it. And you know, it's, it, 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 yeah, yeah. Um, so, anyways, she was accused of doing that. Um, she was kicked out of town. Anyways, he needed to get back home, right? And he had all this money, and he ends up dying in a storm, going back home. Just an utter tragedy, you know. After getting all this gold all this wealth and the storm uh, takes him out and I don't know what happens to his 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 girlfriend or whatever I think she just ends up I don't know I don't know what happens but it's sad it's a sad tale and he was such a brilliant pirate you know he he was like one of the first you know he was great anyways um, I don't want to talk about piracy all all this video uh, but it's, you know, it really piqued my interest, you know, it was just like getting into it. Anyways, Carthage and um, Arverni are still going toe to toe. I love this fight from Carthage. They're not really wanting to give up here, but it's looking like we kind of look at the reserves here of Arverni. It's looking pretty dang close and it's looking pretty dang good for Carthage. So honestly, a lot of um, pressure is going to be on the Armenians because they are gonna have to uh, do a lot of cleanup or our Verney is gonna leave off uh, but we got some axemen going against these noble swordsmen that's gonna be a tough fight for them also we got some archers over here some elite Persian archers kind of opening fire and focusing down on the Nabatean and heavy archers this is actually see I don't know where the elite Persian archers stand I guess we could just look at their stats. I know the Nabataean heavy archers are very good archers. So killing them and using a lot of ammo on them is not a bad idea. But yeah, uh, pretty big fight right there between the archers. It's a pretty big battle. Uh, big, big push here by the Armenians trying to get three units past one. And this uh, caravan guard is not the greatest, so they should be able to slice through them sl slice through them eventually. Uh, back over here, there's a lot of troops in reserve just kind of chilling. Actually, cancel that. He's got a unit over here pushing way far in the flank, doing a good job here. Trying to push back the defenders. Now he's going to be taking on noble swordsmen, though, so I don't think he's going to be able to slice through this defense without more support. Uh, so let's go back over to this, this other side. And sure enough, guys, wow. Sure enough, it looks like our Verney's push here is going to be uh, pretty disastrous. Now, I think our Verney, well, he's got another unit of, of infantry. And then he's got the general. He's got some archers over here. He definitely needs to push up the archers. I wonder if he has any ammo left. Let's see. How many kills does he get? did he get with this? 113, which is pretty solid but if he has more ammo i mean carthage is really blobbed up here but you never know i mean depending on the skill of these units here chosen okay good chosen good chosen great cho okay so all the units he has left is chosen swordsmen so potentially yes our Verney could fight his way through this and oh my god why why does he has oh my god he's got his general in firing range the general is getting focused down by the archers look that's fair game i wouldn't call that general sniping um i guess it is a little bit but i i refer to general sniping more at the very beginning of the battle you know people use like like i literally like literally the very first couple seconds of the battle where you open artillery fire and try to kill the general right away that's more general sniping in my opinion you know, if if a general is in archer range, I say go for it. Um, I make the general have to kind of watch where he's going. And look, I mean, if you don't like his archers shooting at your general, we'll get your archers to shoot at his archers. That will stop him, you know? Which is, it looks like that's what Carthage is doing. Uh, Cretian archers. Oh, wait, no, they're out of ammo. 
They're out of ammo. So they're just throwing. That's a bad sign. You know, that just shows they're running out of troops. They are throwing whatever they have, and they're already breaking in this fight. So yeah, they are, uh, well, they're they're breaking on this side and it looks like, did they run through the gate? Oh my God, okay. Well, they have African pikemen here, but they only have 20 kills. So it's not like they, they committed a lot over there. I think our Vernie's best bet is over on this side. And I think he knows that. Uh, let's go back over to here and see how this is progressing. It looks like the Armenians are pushing extremely hard here. Uh, they've got one, two, three, four, Wait, one, two, three, four, five units, but two of them are breaking. They're definitely going to have to send up more infantry by the looks of Nabatea. Now Nabatea is sending up pikemen. Wow. So thorax pikemen, and I say wow because usually you see pikemen at the very end of a battle. This does not feel like the end. Now I think we've barely been, let's see, we've been, well, we're 16 minutes in, so I'd say it's, you know, it's more like middle definitely middle um but yeah that's that's kind of surprising and look at the breakage here this is look i don't know i mean this this defense looks like it's going very well and now we have the african pikemen of the carthaginians pushing up they just seem to be doing an extremely good job of just holding i, I mean i don't know i don't know how else to put it you know just holding the choke points holding strategic positions carthage on the other hand I mean, they just kind of threw in troops, and they had a lot of success. And that's why sometimes you got to hold the walls, you know? This is, this is definitely an opportunity for that. Now we got archers opening fire and trying to soften up the infantry. Italian uh, swordsmen, African pikemen, trying to get softened up and, uh, you know, weakened there a little bit to uh, for obvious reasons so they don't have to deal with the pikemen head-on with the infantry. Uh, but, yeah, this, this seems like a... Um, just seems like... A, a losing it definitely it's a grind but it feels like a losing fight for the attackers it's still not over yet but uh, the balance of power is it's actually still in favor of the attackers which is kind of surprising so yellow is the defenders red is the attackers it's only a slight advantage but an advantage nonetheless so it, if it was me attacking I think I would have stayed closer to my ally I think that's the biggest problem right now is the distance between the allies because they have yet to help each other out. This is actually over here. This is the first in instance of our the attackers helping each other out. We have some noble spearmen, which is the general. Oh, God. So he, had a, he sent a general by himself over here, and they're about to be creamed. Oh, man. I was hoping these were naked warriors. So it could get kind of spicy in the commentary. I was going to say they're going to get creamed by the naked wars. Anyways. Yeah, they got they got the general surrounded. So talk about total disaster. Guys, you never want to send in a general alone. You know, I get it. Sometimes the general unit is very good. And they could be very effective. But make sure they're never in a position like over here. You know, make sure they're not in a position to where they can get surrounded and they're less effective and they just die. You know, that, that's never good. Uh, back over here, good news for our, Ver or I'm sorry, for Carthage. More Verney troops are breaking, but this pike formation is getting out of formation and it's not looking good. It's not looking good. We've got archers now going into the fight. That's not a good sign. It looks like, in my opinion, our Verney is definitely uh, on its last leg. It's 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 running on fumes at this point. Their their forces, um, but they've done a considerable amount of damage to the uh, Carthaginians, to the point where there could be a possibility where if the Armenians can crush Nabatea, to where they have some troops left over, they might also be able to kill whatever's left for Carthage. At this point. The Arverni player just needs to inflict as many casualties as possible before their army's wiped out. You know, that's that should be their goal. What, what, however you do that, you know, like, 
holding a corner or whatever. Now, oh, okay, he's, here comes the, the Oath Sworn. This is the general for our Verney. Actually gets a pretty decent charge on these pikemen before they, you know, properly form that phalanx formation. So, he might be able to get, uh, well, once the pikes are down, it's hard to, hard to stop it. But he, he doesn't really have a choice. I mean, what is he going to do? I mean, I guess he could run back to the tower and go down. But, like, this is a good, this is a huge win for Carthage right here. Very big win. Go back over here and see how this is progressing. This is definitely, um, whoa. Our Verney, okay. Our Verney is now returning the favor here uh, because we have... The Armenian general, remember, the Armenian general is trying to help out his ally. Now we have our, our Verney sending over the heavy horse, um, trying to do some damage here to the noble swordsman. So, uh, yeah, that was a good little move there. I wonder, okay, he's going to send, I think he's going to try to send, oh, hold on, hold on, look at this. Very nice. They're trying to use the walls here to kind of flank around the pikes. It didn't really work out. He kind of gave up on it, though. It, he could have just kept going. That's what have that's what I would have done and try to rendezvous with the uh, the heavy horse, you know, try to group up with them. Again, like your goal is to try to inflict as many casualties as possible, even if that means being sneaky and maneuvering around and trying to get into weird positions. Because if he just charges in, he's just gonna, this unit's just going to die, you know, this, they're, and they're not going to kill a lot. There we go. That's another option. You know, if they're just going to stand there, just throw your javies at them. All right, and then over here, we've got um, some heavy horse pushing in. And, oh my God, that was a great stand your ground situation with the Libyan infantry. Got a great javy uh, volley off there on the heavy horse and did and inflicted many casualties to the uh, the cab unit so that was a good play there I love I love watching that stuff that's one of my favorite things in in these types of battles of uh, watching a vulnerable unit stand their ground and just inflict you know like you know from like for example javi unit against a cav unit you know just seeing them stand their ground and just like nah we're not moving in fact you're dead you know <laughs> somebody call an ambulance but it's not for me you know <laughs> You know, that's, that's how it is. Anyways, uh, we got some pikes here, um, kind of holding the choke point. Um, yeah, it's, it's looking a little concerning for the attackers at this point, I would say. The bounce of power is now in favor of the defenders. It's not so much in favor to where the, uh, the attackers can't win this battle. But it's, you know, it's never good that the balance of power is in favor of the other team. Especially the defenders. Because it's hard attacking. You need, you need more troops. You need the advantage when attacking a settlement. And they just don't have that. So they're going to have to get really creative if they want to try to turn this around. That was a great charge right there. They got to keep, keep it up with stuff like that. Now we have the general. Look at this. I don't know if he just was sneaking out of that situation. I think he did. I think Carthage was busy dealing with the calf because now the pikemen are just now moving. And this is a much better engagement for the general. A much better engagement for the oath sworn. And that's that's what I'm talking about. I mean, when you're playing this game, guys, and you know your army's going to be destroyed, don't just be like, "Uh, oh, well, I'm out, whatever. Just charge the pikemen. It's over. If you have teammates still alive, you know, and there's a chance they can win it for you, then whatever you have left, try to make it as annoying as possible to kill, you know, and, and try to kill as many, you know, bring down as many forces with you because it, it might just be enough to turn the tide, you know, to save the day. Uh, now we've got some axemen taking the arrow tower over here. Which is a smart play. Um, maybe he can just kind of hold here. These pikes are moving up, though. He's got to capture it quick so it can start firing at the pikes. That would be a good situation. But there's still 109 of them. It's not like this arrow tower is going to kill them all. There we go. Finally. Finally, he gets it. So I am going to be rooting for the attackers here. Just because they're kind of the underdog in, the, uh, in this battle so far. Same thing over here. Very good play um, dealing with these pikes. He's just kind of waiting and using the arrow towers to try to, you know, do as much damage as possible. Okay, so... What? Did they... What? Did they just leave this Oathsworn here? They didn't... 
try to finish him off? What's going on? And the oats are just kind of sitting there getting shot at. Thank you. Yeah, move him. Get him out of there. And he's got his heavy horse still kind of running around. Ooh, yes, this is huge. Okay, this is huge. If he can kill this infantry, it's going to be a two versus one in terms of unit numbers. Pikemen do not do well when they're flanked. So, oh, don't charge them. Why is there cab charging? He needs to get behind them. And what's going to happen is gonna, it's going to cause these pikemen to make a decision. Which unit do you want to face? And whatever unit he's facing, the other unit attacks. And look at this. <sighs> that charge just failed. And he should be charging in. The other unit should be charging in right now. This is a wasted opportunity. Where are you going? Where are you going? Oh, it must have been a pathfinding issue. That's the only thing I could think. Oh, and the cab just broke. The pikemen come out in a in a situation. They come out on top in a situation they should have not have come out of top of. Oh, that is that's crazy. Now the old sworn over here are fighting at the gate. They should win this. The combat's even. Mostly because the Oath Sworn are outnumbered by the uh, Gaelic Warriors. And once again, the Cav is breaking. There we go. Now, I mean, it's not the best, but at least they charged in while this heavy horse was keeping them somewhat unorganized. But he needs to disengage now. This is a losing fight. Do not keep it going. Over here, um, this is what's left. Oh, these pikes these pikes moved up. Is he not paying attention? Or is he actively choosing to fight this? Now these pikes over here are now down to 67. That is pretty good. The last time we saw these pikes, they were at uh, 109, I believe. So I don't know if that's from the arrow towers or they use some javies, um, but they need to fall back. And th this is nice, kite them down. Use some kiting tactics. They don't deal with these guys head first. Uh, we got a little bit of a javy throw. I would just keep doing it. I'd keep the layers going. Like, fall this unit back. Fall the next unit back. They must be all out of ammo, though. And, like, guys, this is what's killing me. This player could easily get up on these walls, run down the walls, and then go down and get behind this, this pike unit. Why are they not doing it? I do not know. I do not know. It's a tragic loss. Over here, we've got um, the Axemen of the Armenians pushing forward. This is nice. This is a really good play here, too. This is a kind of a blunder by the defenders. Do not keep your army piecemeal. Keep them together. Because now that they're piecemeal, it's you're basically giving an advantage to the attackers. So these two units right here, it's a two versus two. You know, that, that should not be the case. You have more troops than the than the uh, the attackers. You should be keeping your forces together. Let them come to you. Don't go out and fight them. We got Libyan infantry going in. They're tired. These troops are very tired. That might come into play here. We got the Ode Sworn. It looks like the Ode Sworn are going to try to protect the flank here. Back over this way, the Armenians are getting fully charged. Oh my God! This is so strangely aggressive from the attack or defenders it's like you don't need to be this aggressive Do, are you trying to throw your general away you know like just hold back let them come to you and this is actually giving hope giving hope to the uh the attackers this is insane there we go the general unit is gone i don't know if he died the general died earlier or what it seems like he did so this is a good play. Really good player. I like what he's doing here. So basically, he's leaving the fight. Uh-oh. Getting, getting laggy. He's leaving the fight, right? Because what's going to happen... Actually, I'm not sure what... Uh, I guess I misinterpret in, interpret what he was trying to do here. In my head, what I thought he was going to do is have this unit here charge and hold these guys back. He falls back the other two units, and then the pikes move up to try to get behind the unit that's attacking this unit over here. And then I thought he was going to send back the units to get behind the pikemen, but that is not what he's doing. I don't know. I guess he's going for the air, or maybe he's going for the town center. He might be going for a town center victory. 
I don't know. And look at this. This Oathsworn. You never count out the Oathsworn. Doesn't matter how depleted they are. Never count them out. They are the Oathsworn. You know? <laughs> these are these are some of the finest soldiers that um, they have the uh, to, to offer. And over here, uh, unfortunately for the attackers, the Axemen or the Armenian Axemen are are breaking. So these these old swords need to hurry up and win this. Hurry up and win this. And then back over here. This is insane. This is this battle is way closer than it should have been. Yeah. I'm going to tell you guys, never do this. Never do this as a defender because they had this game in the bag. You know, the only time you should do this is if you have to go somewhere. <laughs> you know, like you want the battle to end quicker. Um, see, now he, I think he's realized his mistake and he's like, okay, I need to just sit back. I've got pikemen. Why am I pushing forward? You know, I got pikemen. But now it's too late. There's a, there's a window. There's an opportunity here. To get this town center and what i would do as the arminians i would keep this unit back and the reason for that is because i would wait for these pikemen to move so if he sends these two units over here to capture the town center he could easily defeat this unit by holding them in place with one unit kind of like hammer and an anvil with with infantry hold them in one place with one unit and then flank around with the other right and that could easily defeat this uh, heavy desert spearman unit What's going to happen is that this this pike unit, you know, the pike unit's going to be like, oh, crap, we need to go and help. And as soon as this pike unit goes and tries to help the other unit, have this unit here kind of watch and attack. You know, as soon as they see, so like, right there, this unit should be going this way. And keeping the pikes busy. You know, keep the pikes busy. Be on their rear. Um, you know, try to keep them away from this fight. Um... But this is actually a good play right here by Nabati. You see how he's rushing to this choke point so it kind of prevents any kind of flanking position. It looks like they're just going to charge in, which might be okay. I, I think they're going to win this, but they got to hurry up because the pikemen's are, the pikemen are on the way. Let's see. He could still take this unit and quickly break them, which would be good. Uh, back over this way, we have the Oathsworn. 18 Oathsworn. Look at 315 kills. Now, remember, guys, this unit is the same unit that was cornered by pikemen. And they're, st and they're still kicking ass. 315 kills. That's what I mean. That is what I mean. I always try to fight and never give up and look for opportunities. Here we go. Good flank here. Good flank here. Now, they've got to crush this unit really fast before the pikemen show up. You do not want these pikes in a good position. There we go. Very nice. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I think the attackers are going to pull this off. Okay. Got to beat them here. Got to beat them. Ah, see, too slow. And, and mm, I don't think I don't think the Armenians did a bad play here. I just think... I don't know. I just think it would have been better to, to harass the pikes and prevent them from doing something like this. Now, the good news is that he does have Oathsworn behind him. The Oathsworn. Now, they're tired. And there's only 18 of them, but... We'll see what happens. Is it going to be enough? Is it going to be enough? Now, they also have uh, two units over here. They've got some Eastern Ballista, and they have the Libyan Infantry. Now, if they're going to win this battle, they, oh, this is, see, this is good. This is good. Keeping them busy. Keeping them busy. But they've got to hurry up. they got to hurry up. We're down to the last three minutes and 21 seconds. We're about to see the victor here at any second now. It's going to be... Look at the balance of power. It's even now. Isn't that crazy? The attackers crawled their way back into this battle, mostly from the mistakes from the defenders. And they're just sitting there taking it, and it's working, guys. Okay, now charge, now charge, charge, charge. Oh. Don't give them hope. Oh, they gave them hope. 
Oh no, disengage, disengage. Uh, I think that's it. I think the defenders just secured the victory. I think they just secured the victory there. They're once again breaking. God, I, 346 now. Ah, the old sword can't handle it any longer. That's crazy. Yeah, he needs to look for another opportunity to flank, and he's going for it. But unfortunately, the bad news is that their third unit broke. They're right there, you see that? So even though it's a depleted unit, um, it's only 22 in there, you could have less troops than the defenders, but, it, but more units. And with more units, you can outmaneuver. You know, you can flank around and whatnot. So, uh, might be an opportunity here. These pikemen, if they get too aggressive, I would turn both these units on these pikemen. You could break the pikemen really fast. They were already wavering. Twice they wavered. So you could easily turn on these pikemen. They are by themselves. No, no, no. Don't, don't fight. Don't fight. Get both these units to turn on the pikemen. They could still win this. Please don't charge. Oh, no. I guess what they feel like is that this Libyan infantry is outnumbered, you know. And maybe they feel like they can... Be no, the uh, Libyan infantry, there's more of them. Ah, dude. They missed an opportunity there. They missed an opportunity there. What they could have done was have both these units, you know, push the pikes and, and basically have one unit keep it busy while the other unit flanks around it. Now they're getting sandwiched. Okay, good. Don't charge in though, don't charge in. Okay, good play, good play. So what he's doing right now is just keeping the pikes busy, keeping them occupied so they don't attack the rear here. But the Liberty Infantry is winning. And there is a little bit of a gap here he could run through, but he doesn't take it. Uh, he's trying. He's trying to take it. But it's... It's kind of too late, but... If he can cause this unit to break... Oh, no, 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 no. No way. No way. Yeah, that's game. That's game right there. Woof! A very close battle and some major blunders from the defenders... But they recover from those blunders and um, they win the day. And I think the attackers had many opportunities to potentially winning this battle, but just couldn't get it done. A great replay, great 2v2. So uh, this was sent in by uh, Crusader935. So he was Nabatia. Thank you very much for the battle replay. This was very cool. Um, his teammate doing very, very well with kills there. Um, he killed a lot of Arminians. Um, actually, I'm sorry, Arverni. He killed a lot of Arverni warriors. But they actually had a smaller army than the Arminians. So, very good job by Carthage. Good game to everybody here. This was a fun, exciting match. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Hope you learned something. And again, guys, if you have epic battle replays... Be sure to send it to the Discord, no matter what game it is. I mean, it could even be a non-Total War game where you can have replays. Uh, you know, it could be mods, it could be whatever. So definitely send them in to the Discord. The, dis the Discord is linked in the video description, so definitely don't miss out on that. I do appreciate the support, guys. Hope you enjoyed the battle, and I'll see you next time on the battlefield.